Hey guys, welcome back to The Compound and to a new series of retro repaints. In case you're new to the channel and you have no idea what I'm talking about, retro repaints is where I put old school Jurassic Park Kenner decos on modern Mattel Jurassic figures just to tickle the nostalgia bones of us old folks who grew up with that classic Kenner Jurassic Park line. And with all the buzz going around with the Jurassic Park 30th anniversary, I figured now would be the best time to throw down some new retro decos on dinosaurs that I haven't done before. So we're going to kick off this series with this ridiculously out of scale Utah Raptor from the Jurassic Park Kenner line. Now this Joker is so insanely massive and to accurately give this raptor a modern counterpart i needed to find a raptor figure that would be equally as massive to the mattel jurassic human figures so i went through my bin and i found this basic 12 inch raptor figure so this is going to be the one that i use for this retro repaint but you can also do the same exact deco on just a regular small velociraptor figure if you don't happen to have this one now to take this raptor to the next level, which is what we like to do here at the compound, I took my heat gun and heated up the mouth and I split and separated the upper jaw from the lower jaw with an X-Acto knife. And then I heated up the lower jaw and the neck section and then pulled it down and manipulated it into the open position like the Kenner figure has. I also added some teeth using some spare Ultimasaurus prototype teeth that Gary sent me back when I was building the Ultimasaurus prototype for him. You know, I hate wasting parts and pieces, so I usually never throw anything away that I could possibly use in the future for a custom. So holding on to those dentures really worked out and made it so I didn't have to sculpt the teeth or anything like that because I am not a sculptor. So if I can kit bash, I will always kit bash for the sake of ease. So now we'll go over the paint that I'm gonna use for the base body color. Uh, and to get a decent match, I'm gonna choose from my go-to Vallejo paints, and I'll be mixing three different colors together to get a close color for the base coat. Uh, those colors are bronze flesh tone, leather brown, and beastie brown. As always, I'll leave Amazon links in the description box below to all of the paints that I'm using, so you can grab the exact ones that I'm using on this repaint if you're painting along with me. So I just played around with mixing these colors and I kind of did like a one to one ratio of each one until I got a color that was close enough to the skin tone of the Kenner Velociraptor. And then I just thinned them down and I'm just gonna shoot them through my airbrush and apply a couple of thin coats. So the base coat is done and it is as close as I can get, you know, get it to match something that it's, you know, 30 year old plastic and rubber. Uh, it's kind of hard to get it exactly, but it's actually close enough to where you it gets the point across. And I'll also be laying down a glaze of transparent burnt umber later on in the video uh, to get the uh, shade a bit darker. Uh, but for now, this will work and we can go ahead and move on to the underbelly side. So for the underbelly, I'll be using Vallejo Bone White. Again, it's thinned down and I'll be applying it with my airbrush. This just makes things easier and allows me to quickly get that factory fade, which is essentially what I'm going for. Now with that done, we can start to lay down all of the black patterns. For that, I'm just gonna be grabbing some basic Vallejo Black and I'll drop it in my wet palette. That'll help keep it thin and I can go in and start to grind out all of the black patterns all over the body. If you have a figure to use as reference, that'll help. But honestly, there are so many photos online that you can find plenty of reference shots to help give you, you know, the general idea of where to place the deco hits. Um, I'm using mine off screen as reference, but I'll probably just end up doing my own thing with it because, you know, oftentimes the Kenner decos can be a little bit sloppy just because they were mass produced and painted, you know, really quick at a factory. And we have lots of time on our hands now so we can place the deco hits where we want them and make the overall design look aesthetically pleasing. So with all the black patterns done, now, like I mentioned earlier, I'm gonna do a light glaze of transparent burnt umber to blend everything together and to get the color of the body just a little bit darker and a little bit closer to the vintage figure because the skin tone color I used was just a hair too bright and I want to try to get it just as close as I can uh, to the original one. And uh, you guys know that uh, by now, Transparent Burnt Umber Ink is our secret weapon and it makes everything look good. So I'll just do a nice light thin blast over the top part of the Raptor. And that's just gonna bring that orange skin tone down a little bit and kind of give it that old school vintage color that the original one has. 
So with the glaze done, now we need to flatten it out because the ink has a super shiny finish. So just a quick hit with some matte varnish through the airbrush will take that shine down and it will also help seal up the paint to protect it from any rubbing. So we're at the home stretch now and all we need to do is paint the eyes and the claws and for the eyes now I don't have a bright pink color on hand that I can use right out of the bottle so I will have to mix some colors together so I'm going to grab some magenta and mix it together with just a uh, dead white color to get a nice bright uh, pink color and then I'll just apply a couple of thin coats on the eyes and then I'll add a black slit and a white light catch and then I'll gloss them over with some gloss top coat. Now we'll quickly knock out the claws and for that color I'll be using just a medium gray and I'll just carefully go in and cut around the claws and try not to get any paint slop on the orange skin because that would be a pain to try and cover up. So just hold your breath and hope you don't start shaking and knock those claws out. So we're done with all of the paint on this Raptor and now what we need to do is add a bit of capture gear to him just to take it to the next level. So the vintage figure does come with three pieces of capture gear, one being this collar tag thing. So I want to make one for the repaint to wear around his neck. So I took some of the green stuff, epoxy putty, and I sculpted a collar and I just kind of molded it around the neck. And then I dug through my parts bin and found some bits and bobs to add to it just to you know make it look a little bit more interesting. I thought this little box part here looked pretty cool. So I'll just attach that to the side of the collar. And then this little circle thing kind of looks like the big JP tag that's on the back of the vintage collar. So I'll just glue that onto the back uh, where the vintage one is. Uh, and then I'll just take some super glue and lay it down over the uh, green stuff epoxy putty and then kind of press the parts in. And then I'll just paint them all with some silver paint just to make it look like it's one piece around his neck. And with all of that done, here's a side-by-side -side comparison of the Raptors, and I'm pretty happy with how this one turned out. For me, it's always fun to see retro decos on modern Mattel figures. So I hope you guys enjoyed this retro repaint video, and you found it helpful and inspiring in some way, shape, or form. If you give this one a shot or any retro repaint a shot, remember to tag me over on Instagram at the Jurassic Park Compound, because I'd love to see the retro repaints that you guys can come up with for more jurassic related content you know where to find it links will be in the description box below you guys take care and i'll see you around the compound